Hello, it's Lawrence Romanowski from Calgary, Canada. It's the middle of winter and um, we're just in the shop of uh, XJ Auto and uh, you can see some other projects that we've got on the go here. E-Type in the background. This is the Rover. You've seen a few updates on this restoration. And uh, here we get to the engine and the gearbox, which we're now doing. And so I'll just turn this camera around and just go through the latest on this, um, on this engine. Okay, so what we're looking at is the Land Rover Series 2A engine and just a brief history of the engines so these, uh, so these make sense to you. Um, the Rover car company would have put their uh, 1600cc um, F-head engine in the Series 1s, uh, later bumped up to 2 litres. So that, that uh, or original 4-cylinder inlet over exhaust F-head engine would have, they would have used that for approximately the first 10 years of, uh, of, of production. Um, it was very quiet, very smooth, but only had 50, 52 horsepower. And so the need came for um, you know, a, a, a much larger and more powerful engine. And that was met in the Series 2s. Um, and so they came out with a new four cylinder, two and a quarter liter engine. Um, but this was soon modified, and this would have been in about 1958, and I think that they put the new two and a quarter liter engine in the station wagons, but kept the old two liter IOE engine in the short wheelbase vehicles uh, for a little while, and then in, you know, maybe 1960, they would have got the uh, two and a quarter liter engines. Okay, now we change from a Series 2 to a Series 2A, and the, uh, and the engine changes again. The reason they did that uh, was because they wanted uh, to introduce the diesel engine and there was significant parts commonality between the uh, petrol and the diesel engine sharing the crank, bottom end bearings, um, and, the, uh, and the block. So I don't know of any other engine actually, I'm sure there is one, where they did a diesel and a petrol variant and kept the same crank and block. Anyway, the differences were in the connecting rods and the pistons and the head. Uh, so anyway, that became the Series 2A engine and then they would have made that engine for approximately um, another 10 years. Now this is, sorry, that's backwards. This engine dates from about 1970, so about you know 10 years after the chassis in the in the restoration that I'm doing, because it's dated 1961, and uh, and and this engine starts with a, a 307, and that designates it as an eight to one compression. So um, the there was the original two and a quarter liter. Um, then there was a two and a quarter liter with an A suffix, which had many parts that were different, um, including the front timing chain cover and a bunch of other parts. So those two engines generally aren't, the parts aren't compatible. Then they would have ran this three main bearing, um, two and a quarter liter engine up until around 1970. But then they started offering a higher compression version of it, eight to one versus a standard seven to one. And they would have shipped those to different markets. So where I'm going with this is when I, when I wanted to put the engine in the 1961 short wheelbase, um, I, I found an eight to one compression block and that just made more sense uh, for that car. So that's what this is. Um, we have NOS uh, Land Rover pistons and uh, all the internals as well uh, were, um, were redone, uh, of course and with, uh, with NOS parts that I have bought from a collector who had them, who was collecting them over you know, 20 or 30 years. Uh, we have some covers and various other bits that we've spray painted and we're waiting on a few parts from England, uh, the, uh, the roller rockers, and, uh, and then we'll put the head on. And I've got the um, you know, different uh, seal kits and so forth. Uh, waiting to do that. Over here with this mess of stuff, uh, we've got a couple of gearboxes uh, and the uh, and another another uh, engine that uh, we're, we're salvaging for parts. And uh, that's the gearbox, which doesn't look very pretty right now. And it'll go out for uh, high pressure blasting. 
and then we'll clean up the cases, uh, you know, and uh, uh, redo all the bearings and so forth uh, in that. If we need some, ex if there's some worn parts, then we've got uh, another couple of gearboxes that we can also get parts from. So this is all waiting and all of this work uh, will uh, take place over the next few months in winter. And then if everything goes uh, according to plan, it'll all be put together in the spring, uh, we hope. Also, we have some of the original castings and these will all be uh, sent out for some high pressure water blasting along with the casings for the uh, transmission housing, bell housing, etc. So it should all come back looking, looking pretty. This is what it looks like uh, <laughs> when you start, okay? And over here we have the head, which is just waiting to be cleaned up. And uh, we have the new valves and valve springs, thermostat, etc. Um, here are the roller rockers, which we're not reusing. We're, uh, we're getting a new set of those, so we're waiting on those. And we've got the push rods and the head bolts there waiting to go in. So I hope that, I hope that's uh, somewhat informative. Uh, so hopefully that rover will be uh, put together in the spring. And then uh, maybe we'll get this E-type down off the hoist. Uh, and uh, it should be done uh, around the same time, actually. Uh, and uh, it's, uh, it's looking pretty sweet. Um, so just waiting for a few uh, trim parts on that to get it done. So, uh, okay, with that, Lawrence Romanowski from Calgary, Canada. Thanks for uh, watching these videos.